Greetings, Tecmo Super Bowl fans. This is the moment you've all been waiting for. This is the Hero Season 3 Super Bowl between the NFC champion Nelson 79 and the AFC champion Maddie 6750. This has been a long time coming. We've had a long summer. We've had a lot of back end things to do. But at the end of this broadcast, or as the, the game concludes, we will go right into the draft order reveal for the beginning of Season 4. Let's take a look at the teams. Uh, Nelson79 uh, doing a tremendous job this season uh, and really leaning on the strength of superhero Mongo McMichael uh, with the 50 running speed, 75 rushing power, 88 hitting power, and 25 INT. He's been able to cause absolute havoc in tandem with his elite tapping ability and that has been the story, very hot and cold, likes to rush in when he can, doesn't have tremendous back-end secondary against a lot of teams. He also has the blocking of Ironhead Rice. He has Tim Tebow's 38 maximum speed and 94 hitting power, a unique quarterback trait, and so you can use him as a blocker in the motion running set. He also has Otis Anderson, and then he also has Willie Anderson in the passing game. But basically, he is a run-and-scramble offensive guy. And then he has Mongo is the, the cornerstone of his defense. On the other side of the ball, Matty, 6750, has 50 maximum speed Taysom Hill at the helm. So he has a quarterback he can pass with. Against the secondary he'll be facing, he should be able to pass uh, despite. He shouldn't have to worry about jump-picking, at least with average conditions. He does have uh, two good running backs in Dalton Hilliard and Emmett Smith, 50 MS and 56 MS. He can play conditions with that. On the receiving side, really good talent here. He's got John Taylor and Chad Ochocinco. Chad Ochocinco was the hero that he drafted for this season and has a 63 maximum speed with uh, 75 receptions. So a great option there. Um has higher rushing power than a standard receiver as well, so a, a great weapon. He also has Ricky Pearl for the underneath throws. Kelvin Martin, uh, those two receivers, probably not going to see a ton of them. Offensive line is tremendous. He has uh, great hitting power all the way across the board, uh, including MSU Mandrich. So he does have a 50 MS returner. Likewise, on the other side, uh, 38 MS with the reduction that the NFC received. Nelson 79 still has a decent return game in the kicking game. On the defensive front, Jerry Ball and Greg Townsend and Pierce Holt. So you've got a great defensive line for the Raiders. He also has the MVP LT. So a 50 run, running speed, 56 rushing power, 94 hitting power, and 44 INT LB1. And he has a slew of other good drone linebackers, including Mike Johnson at the bottom. On the back end, he's got Tim McHire, Everson Wall, Steve Atwater, and Ronnie Lott. So Ronnie Lott and Everson Walls are really the guys that can make it happen on the back end. I would imagine most of the time you're going to see Lawrence Taylor being used. He is an absolute force. So let's get right into it. For all the marbles, Nelson 79 and Maddie 6750. Let's go. By the way, if you're in chat, let me know and say hello. Maddie wins the kickoff, or the coin toss and likes to kick off. Iron Head Rice, combination between Craig Hayward and Jerry Rice. Created in a lab somewhere, out of his end zone, taken down at the nine. Let's take a look at the playbook. We have the weak side open. Single back plays on one, three, and four runs, pass one and two, and then the shotgun and red gun Z, pass four. Out of the single back, going with a lot early on, the run three right at his direction. And Anderson, and finally isolated, taken down by Drone, second down and one. And a pick play, has it completed underneath to Otis Anderson. And a first down. Beanstalk, 0-7. Welcome. JP the Bowler, Max Strong. Welcome. 
Tim Tebow with the QB sneak. Again, he has 94 hitting power, so he can popcorn some players depending on their hitting power. Not a lot on this defense, though, just tremendous. But Tim Tebow, 38 maximum speed, and that is going to be a weapon in this game. First down just past the 50. The pitch to Anderson. And taking down good drone support, second down and nine. Pierce Holt getting in there. Pitch up to Anderson. Same play. Pierce Holt getting after it again. Absolutely destroying the top part of the offensive line for New York. Lot is gobbled up. Notice Anderson with the run three. Gets it done. First down and ten. We're seeing right now that the defensive front is doing a good job getting after the offensive lineman. And now Ironhead Rice is open, and he drops the ball, and you could have that happen periodically. These are not – this is not a great passing team. Although if he does get a completion, he's got speed and hitting power on the outside, which could be dangerous. Got to look out for that stationary play there on that pass three. A wide receiver, too, if he does get that completion, it could be a problem in the open field. Second down in 10 for Nelson, 79. Back to the QB sneak this time. Well defended, only two yards there. Ronnie Locke got in there and caused problems. Now pass four coming, I imagine. It goes on Everson Walls. He has him with the DB2 position. And now Tebow scrambling. And just short of the marker, nice job by Nelson 79 to make that manageable. Fourth down and one. Going with MVP LT, his best player. Gets a bump. He's got Bentley over the top. Bentley in stride. Touchdown. Nelson 79 scores first. And sometimes Tim Tebow will shank a throw. It's perfect there. And the extra point is blocked by LT, MVP LT. I believe Maddie actually had two draft picks last season. Easily the most active offseason guy as far as transactions. And here comes Chad Ochocinco out of the end zone. And unfortunately unable to get away from the pack there. One defender got in there, and it is day. Mago McMichael running all the way around the defense, unable to get anywhere there with Emmett Smith, second down and 10. Going to Taylor, does not have the diver. Look how fast Mongo is, unbelievable. Third down and 10. Maddie will have to figure out what he can and can't do. And already a safety. Mago Michael gets in there, unable to avoid it. And now he's down nine points. And an, I'm guessing an unintentional onside kick here. And now Anderson... Great field position here for Nelson, 79. And my apologies, it's actually 8 nothing. The extra point was blocked before. But they still makes it a two-score game. Tebow. And the drone is there, only four yards, second and six. Trying to go up to Anderson, outside his reach, Tebow cannot find him. Welcome to the second quarter. Let's take a look at conditions real quick. So MSU Mandridge has now gone into good. That means uh, Maddie has a 56 MS returner. Craig Townsend is now in good, so the nose tackle has 69 hitting power. Jerry Ball is the I believe the top I believe, I believe that's his right end he's got down to 63 hitting power Pierce Holt still at 69 
Lawrence Taylor is now in good. That means he has 100 hitting power, 50 INT, 56 running speed, and 63 rushing power. So he is comparable to what Mongo is disrupting out there. It's doesn't have 75, but I mean, at, at those numbers, it's pretty insane. Emmett Smith going to good. Maybe he can get a running game going with that at 63 MS. Tim Tebow goes into good, so he's 44 across the board. And then Albert Benley and Rodney Hampton going into good. Otis Anderson uh, remaining an average. Iron Head Rice does go into bad. Let's get back into it. See Maddie in chat here. Third down and six. Ronnie Lott. And we got a picked run three. And Anderson loses yards fourth down and nine. If you hear any crying, I do have a four-year-old or near almost four-year-old. And LT almost grabs the ball on the way to the holder. Unbelievable. But the extra, excuse me, the field goal is good. And now the score is 11 nothing. So despite all that, we're still here in the second quarter, the first half. Maddie can find a way to get just something positive going here. He's still in business. And now with Ocho Cinco. Zigging, zagging. Ocho Cinco finally ca caught up with. I think that might have been Mongo who got to him. First down and 10. Great field position from the 39-yard line for Maddie. And here is Taysom Hill. Gets four yards, not a bad idea. And now I'm just going to go back and be here. I like it. Forcing it. Now going to Taylor. And the throw, just not enough real estate there for that torque. It's amazing just how much field Mongo can cover. Going to green, and the pass is not there. Eric Green unable to haul it in. Fourth down and six. Play locked in for Nelson, 79. And the field goal attempt is coming. I don't know if Mongo is going to get in there in a second, but uh, he's going to have to double tap this. And that should be low. Yep, wide left. Having Mongo there makes field goals almost impossible. You have to double tap him and just hope it doesn't get blocked. And now a weak side open run coming here. Going with Adwater, interesting. This is not the MVP one. Or the real Steve Atwater. Surprised he did not go with LT there. Uh, maybe he's just depending on him being a, a super drone. But he would have been the perfect defender to use there. And great defense there, using Ronnie a lot along the defense pursuit to catch up. Second down and 12. Again, despite all that, Maddie gets the ball at the start of the second half. And trying to hit Ironhead Rice way over his head. Tebow can't find him. Third down and 12. We've seen run three called in this spot a couple times. Trying to get Bentley. It's incomplete. Lucky it was intercepted. Fourth down and 12. Tough spot on the field here. Up by 11. Elects to punt. And LT almost gets in there. Ocho Cinco should see a touchback here. And he does. And Maddie, if you don't have condition checker, that it's something we shall have to remedy. So despite all that, only down 11. Again, if Maddie puts any points on the board... He's in a good spot. Run three with Smith. Mongo gets blocked. And Smith out of bounds. A 63 MS really coming in handy. Even Mongo can't just immediately blow that up. 
Pick play. Taysom Hill avoiding. Overthrow. Luckily, that wasn't intercepted. But a great job avoiding the rush. Manny using Taysom Hill to perfection. And there's the bump. And that's what he needed. Here comes Emmett Smith. Zigging. Zagging, look at the, pick, the recovery speed. Tap off. Time running out here. What does he do? Nine seconds. Not a lot of time to get a playoff. And intercepted in the end zone, so that didn't help. Well, welcome to halftime. In the Super Bowl, I don't have, unfortunately, a special halftime show for you. Because we do use the preseason game mode for this, but in short, Mongo is dominating the game. Nelson 79 is doing enough with his offensive chances. Ocho Cinco with the return. And let's check the conditions real quick here. What has changed? MSU Mandarin's still 56. Unfortunately, he hasn't been able to do anything with that um, other than that one return. But though, he's had some pretty uh, average returns with that. Tim Tebow is in good still. Um, not a lot has changed. Vince Newsom goes into good, so he's going to have to be careful. There could be a potential jump pick against Vince Newsom if he were to throw his direction. There'd be a 50-50 on that. Uh, Emmett Smith and Greg Bell in good. Galbraith, MSU Mandarich, Townsend still good, ball still in bad. Lawrence Taylor still in good, MVP LT. All right, and it looks like uh, the Matt Barr kicker for New York is, is doing all right there at 50. So let's get back to it. If you're out in chat, we'd love to hear from you. We had a power outage here, and I didn't know if this was going to be – Rolling or not, but uh, we made it. Looks like we're starting to see still some cloud cover, but I think the, the worst of it is over. All right, here we go. From the single back, run three is picked. One of the plays that actually Mongo wasn't entirely blowing up every time, so I'm not surprised that he called it. And now... Looking at a long play here, and and now there's a jump interception like we talked about. But there was a fumble on a contact there. A lot of Raiders in the way. And here come the Raiders. Steve Smith running away from the pack. Can he zig and zag here? Or just run straight ahead? Wow, what a turn of events. Maddie's back in it. That was the holy roller. In reverse. Mongo tried to get in there. But the extra point is good. And the score is 11 to 7. And Maddie, I say you take the opportunities that Tecmo gives because Tecmo gives and Tecmo takes away. First down and 10 4. 44 everything Tim Tebow right now. Taylor. Moving like an absolute beast. Popcorn someone on contact there. Second and three. Pass two is the call. Tebow just keeping it on the ground at 44 MS. Moving well. And moves the chains first down to 10 for Nelson 79. At water against the grain here. Really, the only advantage he provides is that he's an extra defender in the mix, but he's not faster than anyone that she probably should be controlling. LT doing work right now, an absolute force, but unable to stop Tebow from getting the first down. And I think he's going to have to be okay with just engaging. And hoping that one of those drones comes to save him. Tebow, unable to get away, only gets two yards. 
The pursuit is unbelievable right now. And drone support bails out Maddie as he got knocked down. Third down and two. Everson Walls on defense. And down to Willie Anderson. Flipper gets out of bounds at the 21 and a first down. So now in field goal range despite it being LT. Pick play. No, excuse me. I'm wrong on that. And good coverage. Luckily that was not intercepted. Trying to hit Bavaro. At the bottom, second down and 10. And Tebow to the house, untouched. 17 to seven, your score. And this next position will be absolutely critical for Maddie. Eighteen to seven, your score. Chad Ochocinco. And out of bounds for three seconds here. I think you got to take a shot. I think you got to avoid the rush of Mongo and find an open guy somewhere. Not panicking as he rushes in as a key, knowing your rotations. This time going with Newsom now that he's a jump pick threat. Really, Taysom Hill can do. Probably the last thing you wanted to do there. Uh, welcome to the fourth quarter. And we're going to go take a look at conditions here. So more good condition action here with a couple guys going in bad for the Raiders. LT still in good. Uh, Tim Tebow goes in excellent, and Andre Tippett is in good. So that's another option uh, on defense for New York. Uh, Chris Singleton goes into excellent. Really not something that you're going to utilize. Mago did go into bad. Uh, so if there's something to be said there, this might be a chance for him to maybe just get one more moment of, of relief before he's got to do something. But on that last play that we saw, I think Maddie panicked a little bit. If he created some depth, I think he could have found an open receiver there or at least take a shot down the field. And Tebow, an excellent, will be a concern this quarter. So just going through, moving things around, making decisions, and here we go. Five minutes of techno time remaining. I think with this score set, we're going to have a winner. I don't think we're going to see an overtime situation here. Final five minutes of Tecmo Hero Season 3 in front of you right now. Third down and seven. Singleton, he gets my better judgment. He went ahead and go, went ahead and used him. Going for John Taylor. He's got him in stride. Huge play to the 34 and a first down for Maddie. And that time he started to get used to the rush, avoiding the rush, and finding the open guy down the field. Newsom on defense. Smith, isolation, nowhere to go. Second and ten. It's going to let Mongo be uh, just a terror. And that time the pass was blocked. Mongo got knocked down there, which is rare. Third down and ten. And here comes Smith. Maddie, no one, almost no one taps as fast as Nelson 79, so I really wouldn't threat that. But this is the game here, fourth and eight. Redirect pass here. It is complete. Taylor just gets the marker. I thought he might have been a little bit short. And the mystery continues here. Maddie just. Hanging on the ropes here. Throws this one to Bounds. And, I mean, if I didn't know better, I'd see Nelson 79's looking at Maddie's controller. 
They're in two different locations, people. That was supposed to be a joke. Singleton. On defense. Out of bounds of the 20. You're going to have to score two touchdowns. There's no way about it here. You're going every down. Hill. And uh, interesting, he couldn't even get through there. Nowhere for Taysom to go on that last play. Tries to run for it, and he's just short. Uh, he may have wanted to try that cross field up top. I know that there was a DB lurking, so it might have been GG there. But this is now all for Nelson 79 to just wind her down. And with Tim Tebow being an excellent, it's going to be hard to imagine a situation where man, they can get the ball back, score, play defense, and do it again. But guys, make sure to stay through the rest of this. If you're in the league, we're going to be going through. We'll take a quick break so I can grab a water. And we'll go through the process for the draft order and where we are for next season. It's been a tremendous season. Uh... A lot of fun, a lot of changes. First time we started doing transactions. And remember, DPS was really a Mongo extra point away from at least forcing uh, or from winning the game, potentially. So there, there are a lot of what-ifs in this season. DPS, by the way, who also won the full Nelson online, or I'm sorry, he was second place in the full Nelson online tournament, uh, won the Shield Basement tournament last night, so GG to him. Nice job, LT getting in there, blocker bounced off of him. They're down to 13. They're down to 13. Just got to be careful not to turn it over. But uh, I think mathematically, yep, and here comes Tebow. Excellent, Tebow. And fumbles out of bounds. Nope, it goes bounce around. Here come the Raiders! <laughs> 36 seconds remaining. So kind of the, the way it's gone here for Maddie throws it into the stands. And just going with Singleton. And imagine you'll let him drop back. And maybe he can land one in the coffers. We'll see. Going for Chad Ochocinco. Might be out of the end zone around. He's so fast. And he's got the touchdown. A little garbage time. A little pride. A little class by Nelson 79. Taysom Hill. Now says he has a touchdown in the Super Bowl. He can tell his grandkids that. If he doesn't end up with CTE someday. 18-14, your final here. Congratulations to Nelson79. On a great run. Maddie did a great job. Uh, he's been promoted to the NFC for this season. We're going to get into the alignments for the new conference alignments. As well as the draft order. How we got to that place. In just a little bit. So we'll come back. Let's say five minutes. Uh, I'm going to keep the stream live. And we'll play some techno music in the background for you. But Nelson79, you're a Super Bowl champion. Give him some love in Discord, everyone. Give Maddie some love, too. He did a great job. And thanks for all who played this season. I'm Trojan. Hang tight.
All right, everyone. I don't know if that was quite five minutes, but uh, I have something to drink. And life is good. Uh, Trojan Man, yes, yes. Appreciate uh, everyone chiming in here. So we're going to talk about basically everything related to the draft uh, as far as how the order was conceived and what the draft order is, and then also the conference realignment. And I'll try my best to answer questions as we go, but I don't want to stop and start too much. Um, but yeah, by all means, if you have questions, fire them off, and I'll get to them when I think it's the right time to do that. So thanks for hanging out. Again, congrats to Nelson79 and Maddie6750. Great run, but your champion. Nelson 79. Okay. We'll start with a conference realignment. Um, just a reminder, you're going to control, or some of you are going to control different teams, but the rosters you, you ended last season with are yours. You're not losing those players. Uh, you're going to have those players on the team that you're assigned to. Hopefully that makes sense. All right, let's talk with the, uh, start with the AFC East. Uh, so Nostradamus stepped out of the league. He was controlling the Washington Redskins, and he is gone. What we did is we ported the Washington roster to the Buffalo Wings team, and Dizzy P, who uh, many of us met for the first time at Tundra Bowl, who I believe is from Colorado, uh, is going to control that team, the AFC East uh, was arguably the worst conference within the entire league last season. Uh, part of it had to do with some newness and just frankly, some there were some uh, games that didn't get finished. So we've taken the various players that have struggled. And as you guys see these conference alignments, there's no perfect answer to the riddles that come in front of us with all of this. But we're trying to put together competitive conferences based on what we saw in the last season. So the idea is that we want to have good competition throughout. We don't want to have a, a Nelson 79 against, you know, the, let's say Scarface or, or Mr. Meme who struggled last season. We don't, we don't want to have those kind of situations. So um, don't want to, uh, by any means, insult those players. Obviously, it's just a there's a there's a disparity in ability and and team structure, and this is how we combat that. So, Mr. Meme is going to control the Indy Colt Nuggets. He was controlling the Bengals. He'll of course keep his roster. Uh, Scarface moving from the Steelers to the Miami Aces. Uh, Miami Aces were previously controlled by DKS. The Indy Colt Nuggets were controlled by JP the Bowler. Uh, Chaz joining the league uh, and. Joey Jett had that team and didn't complete his obligation. Uh, so that was the worst team in the league. It went winless, uh, mostly because there was no – not all the games are finished. Uh, so Chaz is going to step up and take that over, but the team is not good. But I think with his experience combined with this group of players that he has a chance as anyone to you know compete for the division – and then Jersey UP is someone that I do not know uh, that can host, does want to be the New York Jets, pleaded with me to be the New York Jets, and as he is an unknown, uh, will take over that team, which also is lacking in a lot of areas. Uh, notably, it has the Bo Jackson right tackle, so the return game always has a 75 MS returner, so that's an interesting tidbit on that team. So that's the AFC East, everyone. All right, AFC Central. Lord of the End, who won that division, uh, is going to remain in the division. Supko, who made the playoffs, will remain in the division, controlling the Cleveland Broilers. And we're going to move JP the Bowler, who won his division, which was the AFC East. He's going to move into the division. So he's going to be controlling the Cincinnati Bengals. And this was a tough decision, but I chose to put DKS in as the final player. He actually took it all the way to the finals with DPS yesterday in a live tournament. He's a guy that can play, 
And he's a guy that I think can hang with the players in this division. Whether his team can keep up is another issue, but he is a good player. And so DKS is going to roll out the Steelers, a four-man division. So here you guys roll up your sleeves. This is going to be the uh, division to look out for in the AFC. AFC West. Sanchez will remain with the Denver Broncos. Protege will remain with the Kansas City Chiefs. And this was a tough decision because Protege did make the playoffs, but he went 8-7-1 and one in his games and just was not a, a situation where I felt like his squad was ready to compete with the other heavyweights there in the Central. Uh, one thing that happened, so Matty 6750 was graduated to the NFC, and so there was an opening. Um, that's part of why we see Dizzy P's Washington squad, which is now the Buffalo in the AFC. But we're going to move Tim Goad to the LA Raiders here in the AFC West. Hawkeye, who actually made the playoffs but uh, didn't go anywhere with it, uh, with the San Diego Chargers, had a 9-7 and record. He uh, is going to stay right where he was. And then Punky QB... Uh, who had the worst record in the division, but won some games uh, with the giant shitbirds. So he's going to stay there. That's your AFC West division. I think there's a lot of parity in the AFC West. All right, NFC East. So this is the division that I was in. Uh, it is it is highly changed. Uh, we have myself and Birdhouse are the two guys that were originally in it. Uh, everyone else is out of it. Alpha TD moves out of the Central. He was playing as the Bears. He's now going to be the Washington Redskins. He'll, of course, have his Chicago roster that he had. Uh, Maddie is going to take over the giant douches uh, where Nelson 79 controlled. So Nelson 79 is going to have a new team. Uh, same guys. He's still going to have Mongo and all that. So Maddie, Maddie is a giant douche now. We love you, Maddie. Birdhouse is going to control the Philadelphia Brown Eagles, his scary interior linebacking core, and QB Eagles, if I remember correctly. Uh, he was a challenge to deal with. Nellieville is going to move out of the NFC West, who had the Dolphin Floggers, the New Orleans Dolphin Floggers. So he's going to be on the Cowboys now. So still kind of hanging out with Southern teams, but uh, in the NFC East officially. All right, on to the Central. Not a lot's changed here. We've got uh, basically a bunch of studs. So Eifer, his Detroit Lions, uh, he was a playoff team. Nelson, 79, playoff team. Obviously the Super Bowl winner is going to take over the Bears. DPS is going to remain with the Bucks. Fast Ed, who had the best record in the NFC at 15-1, but could not uh, make it into the conference championship. Uh, he will be still controlling the dollar bills in Green Bay. And then Thrash uh, is going to come in. He was a division winner, and he's going to come in and control the Vikings. So this is going to be the group of death in the Central, in the NFC. It is it is by far the, the, the toughest one in the entire league. So someone someone's going to be hobbling after this one. Now, last time, I believe, four of the, the, the six... Uh, playoff spots came out of the central, so that was it was the the, mo the the most stacked, and we had to go like several tiebreakers down. Alpha TD actually did not make the playoffs out of. It was it was ridiculous. I, you have to talk to Maddie. We uh, we have to go back into our dialogues, but it was several tiebreakers down that finally put DPS in the mix instead of Alpha TD because they're both ten and six teams. All right, that's your central thrash. You can thank me later. All right, and on to the NFC West. Fox is going to step in, replacing Sammy Smith, 33, so the roster remains the same. The San Francisco Packers. Fox is a player that uh, can, can roll with a lot of uh, really good players. Uh, I think he's probably similar in capability as Sammy Smith. Sammy Smith really struggled this season, and I think that 
the team has a lot of good pieces. For some reason, Sammy Smith went wheeling and dealing early and left a lot of holes in his game, and he couldn't compete with some of the higher-powered NFC Central teams. Young Tell is going to come over from the East, going to control the L.A. Rams. Heidenreich, who was the Vikings last season, really struggled. He was in that group of death, but he's a good player. Uh, he's going to be right at home here now controlling the Dolphin Floggers uh, with his old Vikings roster. And then we have Tim Poppy with his L. Bundy and company remaining with the Atlanta Falcons. So those are your new division alignments. Go ahead and hate on me now if you want because China. All right, let's get into the next part of this. Let's try to explain what the draft order is, um, what the the reasoning behind how we get to where we are, and then eventually where you'll be. So we do four draft – the four top spots are drafted uh, for the lottery. The reason for this is we just don't want anyone tanking at the end of the season. We don't want to reward someone for not playing their games uh, because oftentimes that means someone else ends up picking up that team. So this gives people a chance, even if you're – you know, a playoff team, you might still be able to be a top four pick, which is scary when you think about it. Uh, but it forces everyone to get their games in. Uh, the top finisher, the Austin 79, gets essentially one ball, if you will, or one number, one chance. The worst finisher, uh, which was Joey Jett, who is now controlled by Chaz, has 28 chances. Uh, the total number of 406 numbers are in play. Uh, you'll see a chart that shows what numbers were actually there, so what numbers were selected uh, for those positions. So you can see the order of things. So here's that chart. And you can see, you start at the top, the top finishers, and the actual order of finishing is the further you went in the playoffs, the, the further back you go in the selection process. So this is not the actual draft position. This is the pre- Lottery position. So you see Nelson 79 has one number at the bottom. Chaz has 28. And it counts to 406 numbers total. So hopefully that makes sense. Uh, what For those of you that had ties, uh, the way the tiebreaker went was we looked at uh, the win-loss record within your conference would move you b further back. Um and I think there's a situation where there's, there were two players that had one of those things were both the same. There was NFC and AFC, and we put the AFC closer up than the NFC. And the reason that's done is because the AFC is kind of considered like our, our division two. So that's how that came about. Uh, again, you could have a, a worse record in the regular season than your opponent if you did better in the playoffs. So example, protege uh, made it to the divisional round, whereas... Um, I lost in the wild card, so actually I'll pick ahead of Protégé, assuming that neither one of us wins the lottery pick. So hopefully that makes sense. Uh, but though that's the the records, and let's go to the next slide. All right, here are your draft spots. At twenty eight, Nelson seventy nine. No surprise there, Maddie sixty seven fifty. The AFC winner, no surprise. Twenty six, Lord of the End. Twenty five, DPS. Twenty four, Fast Ed. Supco at 23, Protégé at 22, 21 is myself, Trojan. Thrash will be picking at the 20th spot, and Hawkeye at the 19th spot. JP the Bowler, 18, Alpha TD, 17, Nellyville, 16, DKS, 15, Birdhouse, 14. If you haven't figured out yet, there's already a notable admission or two from the normal order. All right, 13, Sanchez, 12, Heidenreich, Punky QB, Dizzy P, and then Mr. Meme. Mr. Meme just won himself a signed Don Mikowski jersey for signing it for full now, so check that out if you want. We'd love to have you. All right, and now these are the last spots before the lottery picks kick in. Tim Poppy at 8, Scarface at 7, Fox at 6, and Jersey UP at 5. All right, give me a moment here. Maybe a little drum roll in chat. All right, here is 
the fourth spot. Young Tell, the numbers he had were 254 to 276, and 269 was selected. So draft spot number four, Young Tell. All right, and then the third spot, Tim Goad. And so he moves up a little bit. Number 134 selected, and then he had 121 through 136. And this is the big, big hitter for all you guys in the central. Eifer, who has actually won this league before, picked 19. He only had a handful of numbers there, and he has the number two spot. Yes, Eifer is going to have himself a dominant piece somewhere in the mix. Yep. Eifer, the number two spot. RIP NFC <laughs> Central. And the number one pick. No surprise here. Chaz had the most balls in the hopper, as they say. 382 was selected, and he had 379 to 406. So Chaz is going to roll in here and make himself a lot better right away. He has the most balls, that's for sure. So think that's really it. That's my last slide, everyone. That's your draft order. Uh, last order of business. The Shield Tournament process went a little longer than I thought it would. Um, I had hoped to have the sign-up form ready for the the preview tournament we're running. And I'm hoping to have that sign-up all ready to go for you guys tomorrow. Uh, so we'll have that. Uh, so you guys can get signed up for that. I hope each and every person playing in this league will, will pitch in. Uh, all those proceeds will help our live event, even if you can't go to it, it's tremendous support for uh, making that tournament awesome. So that's the, the that's the, the base of it here. Uh, if you guys are looking for tournament previews, or rather the, uh, the league preview, I will do something once the rosters are finalized. We'll go through each division, and we'll, we'll kind of pick a, a winner, or try to predict a winner uh, in chat at that time. So, yeah, I don't know what the betting line is. Maybe maybe we can talk to Kay Molnar. I know he's big on that stuff. But uh, thank you all for a great Season 3. Season 4, just around the corner, but that preview tournament, we get to kind of dry run some of these new heroes and see how it impacts the team. That's coming up soon. So I'm going to go ahead and get that sign-up for you guys tomorrow. And I hope each and every one of you will participate in that. So... For myself, I'm Trojan1979. Thank you for being part of tonight's broadcast and the season. Blessings to you and your family. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday. Take care. Good night now.